A bunch of folks watched the first video on the platypus, the Glock magazine fed 1911 pistol made in America, basically built to order at a pretty reasonable price. All things considered, I was left with a couple questions in that video. Would the gun hold up? Would my opinion change as I continue to live with it? And also I had a couple issues with reliability, so I was curious whether it was the gun with its Glock mag going into a 1911 or if it was just truly crappy ammo. Well, I got those answered and more. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel on the internet dripping with that BDE, that's right, Big Dad Energy. Why are burglars so sensitive? They take things personally. If you've got a favorite dad joke, be sure and sound off in the comments with it and I may feature it on this very channel. I'm David and this is my Stealth Arms Platypus. If you haven't seen the first video on this gun, go ahead and see that. I dive much deeper into kind of the features and kind of how it does, what I think about it and all that kind of stuff. This is really more of an update now that I've shot north of a thousand rounds through the gun and kind of where I see the gun sort of fitting into the collection. So let's start with the reliability concerns. Now, I didn't have any issues with hollow points or anything like that, but I did have a few cartridges that kind of got jammed into the hood of the barrel from the magazine. And I was curious whether it was a gun problem or if it was ammo, and I'm happy to report it was ammo. Those were some dodgy reloads. I tried some more quality reloads and I tried mostly factory in the second 500 plus rounds that I shot through the thing. And I didn't have a single malfunction, absolutely no hiccup. So I can say with a high degree of confidence, it was the ammo. Now that said, the first round feeding off a new magazine that you are releasing for the slide stop on does feel a little bit sluggish going into the chamber when you actually start shooting, you don't notice it at all. The other stipulation is that I cleaned this gun 500 rounds-ish into it, and I used kind of what the same lube package that I use for my open guns, my competition guns, and that is the Modern Spartan Systems Accuracy Oil, which does an amazing job at making your gun more slippery. Yes, I promise it's more slippery than whatever lube you use. It doesn't matter what you think about it, just try this oil. I'm telling you, it makes it stupid slippery. Yes, I have a discount code. Use it if you want to or not. So next concern is with kind of the wear and holster support and all that kind of stuff. I'm happy to report a couple holsters I found that worked really well with this gun. Now, I it, they have two different trigger guard profiles. I have the square one, so this is not going to be true if you've got the rounded one of the platypus. So I used the Dark Star Gear Apollo 5-inch holster. That works really well like it was made for it. But also the Tinacore Velo, uh, the one for the Staccato P, it also works for this pretty well. I would say it's about a 95% match as far as holster support is concerned. So that is exciting about the square guard guns that they can generally work in some 2011 holsters. Now, one thing I did notice when I was carrying this gun is that with the sweat guard, I would get like a weird pinch just to the outside of the sweat guard. I don't know what it is on the frame. I never could figure it out. Maybe it's the manual safety. I'm not real sure, but something was pinching me in the gun where I'd have to adjust myself a couple times a day to get my daddy tummy off the gun. It wasn't a big deal. It's not even really worth mentioning, but it's a pinch that I don't experience with my other single action gun. So I just, you know, gonna bring it up. As far as finish wear, and this is a Cerakote pistol. So with more use, there will be more wear on the pistol. I am certain of it. Uh, it's a very well done Cerakote job. There is basically no wear. There is some plastic marking kind of right there on the slide from using, you know, a plastic holsters, but generally speaking, there's not really, I'm just looking at it, the reflection in the light, there's not really any wear. Like maybe right here on kind of the front edge of the slide, there's a little bit of wear from going into the holster, but that's really it. Like the holst the finish is held up beautifully. It's, it's done well. Even the trigger guard, which is where the holsters are kind of going to rub it with retention, looks really good. So did my opinion kind of change on this gun after I had kind of a cooling off period for a couple few months with this thing? And kind of where do I see it fitting in? I definitely think top of the list, this is a pride in ownership piece because it is so exotic of having like a Glock fed 1911 is really cool. Especially if you're like a former Glock guy, still have a bunch of magazines, but can't stand plastic guns anymore. This is kind of cool because you can use all your old magazines. That said, uh, the gun, while it is an alloy frame with obviously a steel slide, it kind of feels plasticky due to the finish. I mean, Cerakote is kind of like a plasticky feeling finish. So it kind of degrades the metal gun experience just a little bit, but honestly, it's not really that bad. The fit and finish on the gun is really, really, really good. Like the slide movement, it, it's just very well fit. The safety, the trigger, everything about the gun 
If you let a stranger check this gun out, they're gonna say, hey, that's a really nice gun, and it is. So as far as a carry gun is concerned, it's you know low 30 ounces because it is a bushing barrel and not a bull barrel. So it absolutely fits the bill as like a carry gun with the um, commander length slide. I would ditch the mag funnel because that does make carrying the gun a little bit more obvious. But for me to remove the this mag well, I would need a shorter pin, which I don't have. So as far as a range gun is concerned, yes, it is an absolutely brilliant range gun because it is so accurate. Because it's a bushing barrel uh, 1911, it shoots lights out accurately. It's easily one of my more accurate pistols. However, when you're shooting like at the limit, if you're trying to kind of go for speed and accuracy, like practical shooting, I would say that that's when this starts to kind of fall off. Because the gun is a bushing barrel, it doesn't have that extra mass kind of up here. And as a result, it, you know, it is a little bit jumpy because it's a high bore axis hammer fired gun. So it has a lot of rotation. And because it is an alloy frame it kind of imparts all of the force from the cartridge you know straight into your hand so it's it's not as soft shooting as something like a staccato p would be but don't hear me say that like it's not a good shooting gun it's a great shooting gun but if i'm playing for points you know gun racing basically this probably wouldn't be my first pick for gun racing and kind of backing that up just based on the way that they're cutting slides you're kind of limited on your optic choices you've got the delta point pro the rm RCC, the Aimpoint Acro, and I think the RMSC cut. So there's just, you're not getting the full size optics for the gun there. There is the RMR planned eventually. And at that point, I think it's gonna open up it for gun racing a good bit more. But as it is right now, the Delta Point Pro is probably the best, uh, you know, large window format optic you can get. It's been fun to watch Stealth Arms. They've managed to kind of balloon their wait time up after NRA show to about 14 to 16 weeks where they've managed to stay. And I've heard some really cool stories of them bending over backwards for their customers. Tim actually got on an airplane to go service somebody's gun in person, which is really, really cool. Tim's the owner of the company. And I mean, he wants the gun buying experience to be totally different from kind of the retail, like go in a shop and like, this is what we have. They're like, okay, if you're gonna spend this much money, we want you to be really happy with it. We want it to be a gun that you will like forever. And that's kind of what they go for. I mean. The silliness like I did with the trigger with kind of the Perry the Platypus orange and blue, it's awesome. Like this is a really cool gun. Like this is something I can go back to and be happy with. I mean, it's gonna put a smile on my face for quite a while. So the Platypus is a really cool pride and ownership piece, a great carry piece if you want a high-end carry piece. Maybe not a gaming piece, but I tell you what, when Stealth Arms decides they wanna sell variants of the guns that are for gun racing, I'll be first in line to check it out because they do really cool stuff. So hope that answers any questions you have about it. If you got questions, just send off in the comments. As always, I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.